my name is Mike Acosta from ADSR Sounds, and in this particular video, we're taking a first look at a very unique product called the Subpack S2. Now, the Subpack itself delivers very low frequencies directly to your body, allowing you to actually feel the music and enhancing the overall physical dimension of sound. You can sort of think of it as your own personal subwoofer. Again, something that you can really feel more so than hear. Now, I've actually had the Subpack S2 for a little over two months now, and I found it extremely useful in a bunch of different scenarios. So we're gonna talk about the first one, which is right here, of course, in the studio for mixing purposes. Now, the Subpack S2 has been extremely useful for me here in the studio, as it allows me to make better mix decisions when it comes to the relationships between, let's say, like my kick drum and my sub bass frequencies. Uh, it really helps me out a lot when I'm working on very heavy bass focused music, such as trap, hip hop, um, future bass, and some of the deep house stuff. Personally, I don't have a subwoofer here in my studio. I always felt that a sub kind of gave me a false representation of my low end frequencies by either over hyping it too much or sometimes not giving it enough. And so I would always find that my mixes later on suffered because of that. So it, it, it ended up being a lot more work for me to go back and make adjustments. So that's why I've just never put a subwoofer in my studio. Now the Subpack addresses that issue by being connected directly to your body, whether it's the S2 version, which goes on a chair, or the M2 wearable version. It delivers the low frequencies directly to your body and it doesn't rely on the acoustics of your room or how high you turn the volume up on your monitors to really get a sense of the low frequencies in your mix. Now this can also be a very cost-effective solution to buying a bunch of additional acoustic material specifically for low frequency absorption, such as bass traps. On top of that, you gotta make sure that if you do have a subwoofer, it's the right kind of subwoofer for your room. Make sure that it matches your monitors properly. You have to place it in the correct position in the room. On top of that, then you gotta go and set the crossover points. You can see where this starts to add up and it's a lot of time and effort into getting everything to work properly together. And of course, costs more money. So let's take a quick look at the specs of the Subpack S2 and what's included in the box. Now the frequency range that the Subpack S2 responds to is between five Hertz and all the way up to 200 Hertz. It really reproduces a large area of the lower frequency range. Subpack is the physical dimension of sound, which Subpack refers to as physical audio. The Subpack S2 also comes with Bluetooth capability. It has Bluetooth 4.0 with A2DP streaming, which allows for easy connectivity to your mobile phone, portable tablet, or Bluetooth-enabled hardware streaming device like an Apple TV. The Subpack S2 is also battery-powered and can run up to six hours on a single charge. So here's what's included in the box. You have the Subpack S2, the control box with flexible straps, the three point removable strapping system, and the battery charger. So here's how I have the Subpack S2 set up in my studio. The Subpack is connected to output C of my Presonus Central Station, which has three individual output selectors. Output C is actually meant for a subwoofer, so when it's activated, the switch doesn't shut off switch A or B. I have my Dynaudios on switch A, and I have my KRKs on switch B. This setup allows me to engage the Subpack when I need it, and shut it off easily when I don't, all from my desktop, using the central station remote. Now over the past two months, I've been using the subpack to help define my low end a bit better without having to put a big subwoofer in my studio space. Usually I'll have a track started and as I approach the mixing stage, I'll engage the subpack and use a spectrum analyzer to monitor the low frequency area of the mix. I'll find a decent volume level on my studio monitors and then engage the subpack and dial up the intensity until I feel it's a nice proper balance between the two. Once I have the monitors and subpack balanced out level wise, I then begin to address the low frequency areas of the mix and make suitable adjustments to the kick and bass parts as well as any other material in the mix that occupies the frequency range below around, let's say about 160 Hertz. 
The sub pack allows me to feel the attack of the kick drum or sub bass and be able to balance out the levels with the really low sub harmonic frequencies that my studio monitors can't reproduce that well. Not only has the sub pack helped immensely with my mixes in the studio, but it's been amazing when I'm gaming online with the Call of Duty series, in which the sub pack really brings a much more immersive experience. I can feel the explosions, I can feel getting hit with a melee attack, as well as being able to sense someone walking above me or trying to creep up behind me for a stealth kill. Watching my movies when I just Netflix and chill has also been great. I just slap on my noise canceling headphones, hook up the sub pack with the battery all charged up, connect via Bluetooth, and I'm immersed in a full movie theater experience. It's awesome. Essentially, the sub pack helps with using more of the five senses. You know, when we watch a movie, we see the picture, we hear the picture. And now with the sub pack, we feel the picture, similar to a movie theater with massive subwoofers everywhere. Let's take a look at some additional advantages of using the sub pack as two. The Subpack S2 is pretty portable, and it offers a full range production solution to be able to mix anywhere at any time with the M2 wearable model, or at any location that actually has a chair where you can just attach the S2 model. The Subpack S2 also helps with noise reduction. It's not 100% silent as you can hear the buzzing a bit from the sub itself depending on how high you have the intensity set, but overall it's pretty quiet and it definitely will not disturb your neighbors if you're in an apartment or others in your household if you're working on music late at night. That's always a great thing. Ear fatigue reduction. Now, being able to feel the sub frequencies allows for lower volume levels on your monitors or headphones, which then allows for longer production time without the ear fatigue you get of listening to music at really high volume levels for long periods of time. Obviously, this really helps protect your ears. And the one last thing is mix translation. We always want to make sure that our tracks sound just as good as they do in our studios on multiple systems, such as tablet devices, smartphones, or any sort of like hardware streaming device. We want to make sure that if it sounds good in the studio, that it's going to sound really good on any device that plays it back. And the sub pack can assist with how your low frequency material translates between multiple systems. The Subpack S2 is just really a great product, and I don't really have any major complaints. There's a couple of things that I would like to see, uh, probably in an updated model, which I'm, I'm sure there'll be something coming soon, I hope. But uh, the first thing would be, I'd love to see a crossover switch or dial built into the actual control box, um, specifically for working with monitors such as my Dyn Audios that are behind me. Uh, those have high pass filters in them and a lot of professional studio monitors usually have that built in. So it'd be nice to be able to dial in the sub pack on the actual control box. And let's say if I wanted to dial it in to only reproduce frequencies from 60 Hertz and below, and then I can set my monitors to be from 60 Hertz and above. So that's my only real major thing that I would love to see in an updated model is just some sort of crossover a selectable crossover switch on the actual control box. Um, also too, on the back of the control box, I'd like to have the inputs there instead of on the front. Um, just a personal preference, but uh, I'd like the inputs to actually be quarter inch jacks instead of uh, eighth inch uh, stereo mini plugs. Uh, again, if you're connecting it with high-end audio interfaces and things like that, it'll probably be a little bit, it would make it easier, at least for me, to just take some quarter inch uh, jacks and go straight out from the interface or headphone monitor switching point and then just run it right into the control box. Other than that, the Subpack S2 is really great. It's definitely a fun piece. It's super versatile. As, I, as you've seen in the video, I've, I use it in a bunch of different scenarios and it's really great. And I don't, again, I don't have any major complaints about it. It's a really great product. If you'd like more information on the Subpack, make sure you visit the Subpack site you can also check out other artists that they have that are using the sub pack, as well as other music enthusiasts who just love it for everyday listening of their favorite tunes or watching movies and other things. Make sure you subscribe down below to the ADSR YouTube channel so that you're constantly up to date with all of our video content that includes first looks, courses, tutorials, and gear chat episodes. My name is Michael Costa. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.